Welcome to month two of Only Connect, a marklives.com podcast. I'm Bradley Elliott, your host, the founder of Platinum Seed and Continuum. This month, I'm talking to Tim Allerman, CMO of Fed Group. For those of you who don't know, Fed Group is the largest independent financial services provider in South Africa. And they're doing some really innovative stuff in the world of both marketing and financial services and beyond. In fact, they refer to themselves more as a technology business now than a financial services business. And Tim will be talking to me about what marketers want in this day and age, given the big hype word around digital transformation, AI, IoT, data. What does it mean for marketers? What does it mean for marketing departments? And more importantly, what does it mean for agencies and agency bosses? Thanks for taking the time to chat to me, Tim. I really appreciate it. Um, so I'm just going to start off asking you a bit about uh, your background and um, where you started off your journey and your career and, and how you landed up at Fed Group. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I basically started off essentially in the agency world. Um, so I uh, yeah, probably spent about 20 years in the agency environment, really in the strategic uh, side of things, so a strategic marketer. Um, and I think advising beyond just comms, also going into sort of some kind of business strategy and so on. Uh, and I eventually, I think, uh, got a bit tired of the agency world <laughs> and uh, went off on my own, uh, essentially doing marketing and strategy consultancy uh, mm-hmm. to clients uh, directly as well as uh, through some agencies. Um, one of my clients um, that I was consulting to at that stage was Fed Group. Uh, Fed Group is an independent, uh, diversified financial services group, uh, and I did quite a bit of consulting uh, to them. Absolutely loved the culture and the organization, um, and uh, yeah, Grant, the CEO, eventually convinced me to join full-time, and that's where I've been for the last two years. There's obviously a lot of hype around, you know, we read a lot of hype around AI and digital transformation, and businesses going through these digital transformation journeys and fourth industrial revolution and all those sorts of things. And I personally have quite a view on it that a lot of it is nice hype buzzword. It's good to get people thinking about these things. But maybe you want to talk to me a little bit about what, what Fed Group's doing in, so, in terms of putting technology at the core of its business. We were an interesting business in that we both have traditional product lines, uh, sold through traditional channels and a lot of your sort of group and B2B based business uh, and a lot of sort of traditional financial services uh, type stuff. Um, but increasingly, we are expanding into far more innovative uh, and retail uh, areas of financial services and really trying to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, so um, we're focusing a lot on new innovations, on new technologies, looking at new target audiences, uh, needing to look at new channels to market in order to service those uh, customer segments. Um, and we're increasingly looking at uh, going to market with products that aren't necessarily uh, being offered in the market uh, as yet and really giving um, customers out there something new to to look at um, and better value, better options. So we, for example, recently launched something last year called Impact Farming, mm-hmm. uh, which is a completely different uh, financial services model. It's essentially direct ownership in assets uh, as opposed to traditional sort of financial structures and funds. We try to strip out the complexity and so on. But this gives us a far more sort of tangible, uh, direct contact with customers. It's a form of a retail type environment. But we've actively embraced uh, innovation in that concept, both from a product perspective as well as in the use of technology. So we we have consciously made it an app-first product, mm-hmm. um, which uh, introduces its own complexities, but also um, you know, a lot of uh, interesting dynamics uh, into the environment. Um, and along with that, um, I think um, we've put a lot of technology behind uh, the platform as well as kind of the app. So at, uh, at its core, FedGrid actually operates off one central uh, technology uh, platform or system, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to, uh, which is different, I guess, to many of the bigger financial services companies out there that are operating on these multiple legacy systems that don't speak to each other. We have one system that speaks to uh, everything across the business that plugs into everything externally, home affairs, SARS, the banks, et cetera, et cetera. It has a single view of customer um, where we can see what's going on across the business. We have uh, immediate access to data. We know exactly what is going on in the business in terms of sale, in terms of customer care, in terms of phone calls, dropped, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the core uh, that we operate the entire mm-hmm. business on is this platform. 
we both react on that same uh, platform, uh, the back end. Um, so essentially, we have this amazing system operating our business, but now the app also essentially um, has uh, this, this back end um, of, of which it's based. Um, which means that we have, once again, uh, this uh, immediate sort of access to customer information. Uh, we know exactly what's going on uh, every, every sort of minute of the day. Um, and we can use that information to plan accordingly. We've also essentially plugged a, a bunch of other applications uh, into the platform. So it's not necessarily like we're trying to develop everything from scratch ourselves. Yeah. Obviously, there are platforms and guys out there who do certain things really well. Um, you know, these global businesses, these global software businesses and platforms and so on uh, that do their uh, certain areas of the business fantastically. And we plug into those um, and we plug those into the app through APRs and so on. So um, I think for us, we have a combination um, of developing our own uh, technologies where appropriate, mm -hmm. um, but also plugging into best of breed uh, where appropriate and integrating those into um, our solutions. We have particular interest in a number of sort of technologies that, uh, that, uh, that we believe are going to have an increasing play in, in the financial services uh, sector and beyond. So, for example, uh, technologies such as IoT, mm -hmm. uh, AI and machine learning, peer-to-peer, um, -peer, uh, you know, and FinTech and so on. So a lot of those we have into as well. So, for example, we actually have formed our own um, IoT company. Uh, it operates as an individual business on the side, but essentially we have a 50-50 shareholding in that business uh, that does a lot of stuff for us that actually plugs directly into the impact farming uh, platform, as an example. Um, we have formed a, a, an AI uh, and machine learning uh, mm -hmm. business. So once again, uh, we have a shareholding in that that operates as an independent business, mm -hmm. uh, but also plugs into our existing businesses as well, and also into the impact farming uh, platform. Uh, so we get, you know, we'll use, for example, that uh, machine learning resource um, to do a lot of the analysis um, in terms of what's going on in the app, uh, what's happening in terms of customer behavior and usage. Yep. Uh, you know, the whole sort of UX UI gives us uh, insight into how to further develop the app um, and some predictive learning in terms of, uh, you know, how we need to uh, essentially just, I guess, provide better UX and UI for our customers um, going forward. Um, so, yeah, I think whereas... Fed Group was a really traditional financial services mm -hmm. business probably five years ago. I think uh, at the moment we more consider ourselves a technology company mm -hmm. that happens to have about 10 financial services licenses. You touched on so many important points and I'm going to try try to go through them quite quickly. I mean, I spoke about asking you, you know, putting technology at the core of your business, which you seem to have done. But everyone focuses on the technology, but there's obviously a huge cultural shift that, that goes alongside with that. I mean, the tech side, uh, you know, last month I interviewed the head of uh, Uber Eats in South Africa, and our whole conversation was on data and how to use that to become more customer-centric. I think you touched on that. You know, having a single view of customer is so important, and it's something that a lot of the really big corporates still can't seem to get right because everything seems very really siloed. So making those initial technology decisions is really, really important um, in terms of how you can then gather that data and obviously use it moving forward. Obviously, that goes into IoT and AI and prescriptive and predictive analytics. How have you seen this change change your own role as a CMO from where it might have been traditionally? So whereas we traditionally had a, a very traditional financial services uh, business, um, yeah, we can now uh, essentially operate in, in multiple different areas. I, I'm talking very generally, but in yeah, sure. the past, marketers and CMOs operated perhaps a lot more out of intuition, gut feel, uh, shooting in the dark and hoping that you're going to hit something. I think what data and access to information has given us is perhaps a lot more certainty, uh, you know, through access to information. That perhaps allows us, you know, I guess, two primary uh, benefits. The one is it allows us to more accurately define the problem or opportunity um, that we, that it's solving uh, or that we can capitalize on, um, you know, because obviously looking at data, looking at the information, uh, we can isolate uh, what the actual um, issue is or, or the what uh, more easily, um, as well as then what tech allows you to do is perhaps gives you, you know, more weapons in your arsenal, um, more uh, possible solutions in terms of how to address 
customer needs or capitalize on those opportunities uh, going forward. So I think that in a nutshell, the data and information gives you just a bit more certainty um, and a bit more of a scare as opposed to always just shooting from the hip and hoping uh, that you have the right solution going forward. I think it's also made marketing departments a lot more accountable. Marketing departments traditionally have been held very unaccountable. You know, they sort of, you know, they go to the CFO, they ask for a budget, uh, come the end of the year, everyone's like, okay, how's sales done? How is this done? Okay, marketing, uh, you guys put up a couple of billboards, you know, you run a TV ad. It's very hard yeah. to measure, measure mm-hmm. impact. So I think the measurability of the impact and the results is also um, meant that marketing as a business function has become more measurable and therefore there's a more accountability around it as well. Um, <laughs> would you agree with that? I would agree with it. Um, I I also think there's a danger uh, inherent in that, in that one needs to be careful about not falling into Mm -hmm. short-terminism. I think uh, far too many companies are focused on the short-term effect, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it is obviously a lot easier to measure uh, short-term effects of marketing than the longer terms. Mm -hmm. I think one of the challenges of, um, of a good CMO or good marketers Mm-hmm. would be to walk that line between uh, lead generation, short-term sales, short-term growth, short-term measurability um, of uh, marketing effects mm-hmm. uh, versus always ensuring that one is looking to uh, the end goal um, yeah. and that one has a long-term view of where one's going as a company or what one is trying to achieve with customers uh, in terms of building the brand and those long-term uh, growth and sales effects that marketing no doubt has a massive effect in terms yeah. of achieving, just more difficult to measure. So there has to be that balance in my mind. If we look at marketing agencies, since you do come from an, an agency background, my view is that having run an agency for a number of years is that uh, even ourselves are even guilty of this. It's sort of retrofitting uh, insight to an idea as opposed to being driven uh, by insight themselves. So you know, yeah. have you seen that agencies are sort of are they are they adapting fast enough to what to what marketing departments and CMOs are really focusing on? I, I always find it remarkable. I think agencies are often uh, you know supposed to be uh, these real sort of lateral thinkers and uh, you know breaking the mold uh, type mm-hmm. people. Often they're pretty stuck in tradition and the old way of doing things. So uh, you do get the agencies that I do think are. Uh, pretty traditional in terms of their thinking, um, and unfortunately, I think egos also get in the way. So, what you often, for example, uh, may find is that a traditional agency would uh, you know, understands the need for technology, understands the needs for other types of thinkers beyond your sort of traditional above the line thinkers. May buy a digital agency or may mm-hmm. buy a tech capability, as an example. Mm-hmm. I think all too often, what happens is that um, too often that bought uh, resource is then absorbed into the main agency um, and into the traditional way of thinking that is essentially almost forced to touch the party line as opposed to augment and change and strengthen the overall agency proposition uh, over time. So, you know, for me, these new uh, technologies, these new resources, the new ways of thinking uh, should be welcomed and absorbed into uh, the traditional models uh, and seen as you know, additional weapons in the arsenal as opposed to threats uh, to people's livelihoods and careers and, you know, and, and, and I guess threats to creativity. I mean, to me, they yeah. should be tools to enhance creativity and allow for greater certainty, uh, uh, better access to information uh, mm. that allows for enhanced creativity as opposed to being a threat to it. I think that's a big misconception, um, you know, that AI and these sorts of things will... Um, you know, take out humans one day. But creative thinking is such a critical skill set that we are still possess, or that we still possess, that computers just can't can't keep up with at the moment, with technology, I should say. Um, Absolutely. And, and I, I must just say, I think that it's one of the things that agencies shouldn't lose. I think, so the flip side of it is that, you know, agencies, I think, are, you know, there's an onslaught of other competitors into the agency realm and, you know, the likes of the... Uh, the consultancies and so on. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think agencies need to play to their strengths. And their strengths mm-hmm. generally lie in the lateral thinking and mm-hmm. creative realm. So whereas you know, a consultancy might be giving you a you know, solution based on best practice or mm-hmm. you know, some sort of traditional model, um, I think the agencies, you know, where they should be coming to the fore, is to provide the lateral thinking, the, 
the, the different view of the world, the innovative, never tried um, you know, method or solution uh, that the traditional uh, consultancies, for example, aren't going to give you. I think yeah. too often uh, agencies are trying to do what these other guys uh, already do, as yeah. opposed to playing to their own strengths. On that note, what do you what do you look for in a marketing marketing partner, and what are the most important decision making factors for you? I think you know a lack of ego um, and a willingness mm-hmm. to collaborate. Those yeah. things that aren't uh, very agency, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the opposite of what agency. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you know you, you're looking for people uh, who are essentially commercially. Minded. I'm not talking about mm-hmm. everybody within the agency, but essentially yeah, the, the agency leaders, the agency leaders that you're engaging with need to be commercially minded. Uh, they need to be business people, and they need to understand the commercial intent of any organisation. Um, you know, including obviously the clients. Yeah. Um, that uh, and that their, their, their solutions need to be, um, you know, have a sales result, have a have a growth result, uh, have some kind of um, you know commercial result at the end of, of things. Uh, so they need to understand what the client uh, is looking for from a commercial perspective and find uh, creative solutions that achieve that goal, not some secondary goal that happens to have a better creative solution. Um, you know, yeah. we need to be solving the commercial problems. Yeah, and I think that's sort of what I was alluding to um, earlier on when I was saying that the role of marketing had changed and become more accountable is that you, we, agencies can't hide behind the fluff, fluffy metrics anymore because marketing does actually have a sort of measurable way that it adds to the bottom line now. I yeah. mean, I guess maybe what I didn't say, because primarily mm-hmm. what I'm looking for in an agency is creativity. I'm looking for a mm-hmm. high level of creativity, mm-hmm. something that is going to cut through the clutter, that is going to be massively impactful, that is going to be, um, you know, create an impact on the customer, um, uh, is going to be spoken about in the marketplace, um, is going to generate uh, fame and uh, you know, for the brand, um, you know, so, so I am absolutely looking for a highly creative solution uh, that is going to stand out from the wallpaper. But the creative solution needs to be focused on solving the commercial problem or challenge yeah. or opportunity as opposed to, um, you know, just fluffing some egos out there. Yeah, and do you think we, do you think we have the talent in, in this country to pull that off, or in general, yeah? I, I do think we have the talent, um, yeah. Um, I, think there's, I think there's a lot more collaboration needed these days um, and I, I think I'm talking within uh, organizations as well as within the service providers so whereas people I think in the past were happy to go up in their silos and do their little bits and come back to the table I think the world is moving way too quickly for that these days we're looking for far more agile solutions far more prototyping far more design thinking uh, sort of agile methodology um, you know where we have iterative processes um, that can be adaptive to change uh, in the short term. Um, I think that, for example, even if you just look within um, within organisations, um, you know, that marketers work for, um, often you you need a lot more collaboration within the departments, within the various functions. Uh, yeah. You need to be aligning the entire organisation to customer-centric thinking, mm-hmm. uh, to a marketing, uh, you know, disposition. Uh, and focus on the world uh, where the customer is at the center of everything. But you can't be doing it all yourself. You need to be relying on um, essentially other functions. You need to be relying on your service partners uh, at a a collaborative level. And I think um, what marketers are looking for is way more collaboration uh, between the various marketing service providers. There's just way too many silos, way too many egos at play. Uh, that aren't in the best interest of the brand. Or the uh, yeah, I could not agree more. I think that's what I was about to say. You know, we've always prided ourselves not to blow our own trumpet, but on on collaboration. I um, mean, literally on our wall, it's written "No ego, no bullshit." Uh, I'll send you a photo if you don't believe me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and, that, and that's the biggest thing for us. Because everyone, you know, that as you said, marketers want more collaboration, but agencies are typically not collaborative, which is kind of strange because it's counterintuitive. But yeah, exactly. I think a lot more collaboration is needed, and I need to understand that. The pie is big enough, A, to share, and it also grows, obviously, the more you collaborate. We should be worrying about the end results of clients, not what lands up in our bank account, because ultimately, now that it's measurable, the more growth we can prove uh, from a commercial viewpoint, um, obviously, if we grow people's businesses as marketers, then the pie increases in size, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, for example, I mean, when we, when we did uh, the impact farming launch uh, last year, yeah. um, you know, my, my, I guess my big message to all the partner agencies was, 
you know, this is an opportunity for all of us. You know, this is an opportunity for the Fed Group brand mm -hmm. uh, in terms of um, an innovative uh, platform out there, putting our product as well as our brand uh, uh, on the map. Uh, but it's equally an opportunity for all the partner agencies, um, both from a revenue perspective uh, going forward, um, as well as a creative um, opportunity where, you know, if we make this work and it works for the brand um, and it's a commercial success, uh, you know, there's more of it uh, going forward. Um, if uh, we're all sitting in our silos and um, just worried about our own bottom line and this thing's a flop, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't help anybody going forward. Yeah, and I think, sorry, just one final note on, on that point is when you're talking about collaboration between service providers, I think one thing I've noticed is that, is that clients don't want to, or marketers don't want to be the ringleaders, right? They don't want to have to sit and coordinate everyone. They want everyone to go off and be mature enough to sit down and sort it out amongst themselves and collaborate naturally, as opposed to them having to be a ringleader and always bring people around the table. Um, I think it's absolutely fair to say. Uh, yeah, I think we've got, um, I, I, think, uh, I think often, uh, certainly, you know, you sit on the agency side and you wonder what the hell are clients doing all day. Um, yeah. You know, we're busy. Uh, we've got a lot, yeah, a lot going on um, and a lot, of, a lot going on that is not necessarily uh, sitting in the comms, the comms side of things. You know, there's a lot of other things that are going on in the organization. Um, yeah. And I think you're wanting, yeah, absolutely, to rely on your agencies to act like adults and um, yeah. act in your best interests. Any, I'll ask you another quick one. Any great, any recommended read or podcast that you, that you listen to? Any um, recommended? Any, uh, read the podcast. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, a, there's a... Swear books or podcast that you swear by. Um, there's a great uh, book I'm reading at the moment uh, mm -hmm. called uh, Modern Monopolies. Mm -hmm. um, which I think apparently uh, uh, I have some inside info that that's like a must read for everyone inside Fake Group. Apparently, you're not in this one. Absolutely, 100%. Right. So I think if you just look at uh, once again, we you know we we do have some exco sort of uh, reading material. Yeah. Um, just in terms of aligning us all in terms of where we're going as a company, and yeah. I think if you wanted to understand. Uh, the structure and the business models of future companies. I think it's a great mm -hmm. book uh, to read, mm -hmm. The Modern Monopolies, just in terms of understanding, uh, you know, uh, platform businesses essentially versus mm -hmm. old school linear type businesses. Linear businesses. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, how that plays going forward. And uh, how brands grow? Have you read it? How brands grow is uh, absolutely, I, I am an absolute evangelical about Ehrenberg Bass and Byron mm -hmm. Sharp. Um, mm -hmm. And all the thinking that goes beyond, you know, behind that, I think that any marketer who hasn't read How Brands Grow and the subsequent books and papers and research uh, articles um, is losing a lot. I think that uh, Ehrenberg Bass are at the forefront of understanding uh, the reality uh, and the empirical evidence of what is going on in markets and how mm -hmm. to nudge consumers forward. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Great book and, and great, uh, great guys. That was doing some amazing stuff. Okay, great. Um, great, thanks, yeah. And, yeah, and uh, we'll chat again soon. And I really appreciate the time, and thanks again. Good night, thanks for the chat. It's been fun. Great, appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks for listening. This has been Only Connect, a marklives.com podcast. If you have any questions about technology or digital transformation and their role in marketing, please feel free to drop me a mail at bradley at platinumseed.com. Also be sure to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below this video. Until next month, Keep connecting.